It's time for Community Gospel Baptist Church on K99.3 WKVI. Brand new life, a brand new start. I'm clean now. The chain of sin have been taken away. I'm just like a newborn child. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. How are you this morning? This is the Gospel Revival Hour. I'm Pastor Paul Begley, and this is 30 Minutes of Power Pack Anointed Praise. We're broadcasting today from the studios at WKVI Radio. We just want to say good morning to everybody in the Kankakee Valley area. It's going to be a great time at Community Gospel Baptist Church. That's Community Gospel Baptist Church. We're located on the corner of New York and McGill Street in the heart of Knox, Indiana. Services this morning at 11 a.m. It's 403 McGill. We want to see you this morning. My dad, Pastor Charles Begley, is standing on the front porch with open arms welcoming you into the service today. It's a great time to come to the house of the Lord. And again, the services begin at 11 o'clock this morning. I, I just love to see us. So go ahead. You know I'm going to say it. Drink that last cup of coffee and get ready and say, yes, he's right. We're going to church today at Community Gospel Baptist Church. Services at 11 o'clock this morning. It's going to be a great time of fellowship, and we want you to be a part of it in Jesus' name. Everybody's welcome. Everybody's welcome. So praise the Lord. All right. Here's a song. I'm building this house on the rock, on the holy word of God.
Williams Tree and Stump Removal is a quality service all year round. Ray Williams and the Williams Tree and Stump Removal can take care of all your needs when it relates to that big oak tree that's sitting by the corner of the house. You're afraid it's going to fall on your home in those high winds this spring. What about when we do have those windy spring March days and the storm and limbs are everywhere? And what about that ugly stump that has been sitting there? You've been mowing around it. It's time to grind that thing up and get rid of it. Who do you call? Call Williams Tree and Stump Removal. It's a full-line tree service. Give them a call. That's Williams Tree and Stump Removal. That's 574 946 7687. Let me say that again. That's 574 946 7687. That's Williams Tree and Stump Removal. Let him cut all them limbs. Let him grind up them stumps. Remove that big oak tree. No job is too big or too small that Williams Tree and Stump Removal can't handle. That's 574 574- 946-7687 or call the 1-800 number 1-800-860-0350 that's 1-800-860-0350 Williams Tree and Stump Removal let them take care of your tree removal needs Pastor Paul has asked me to remind you Sunday school is at 10 a.m. the youth group meets every Thursday at 5.30 p.m. and now here's today's sermon Turn, turn your Bible to third chapter of St. John, and I'll also be, if, if I get that far, I'll be going over to Matthew chapter 7 for a couple of verses. You know, I, I, uh, I come to church, the Bible, does the Bible say they give you the desire of your heart? Well, I come to ch- church wanting to preach, you know, and I don't always do that. I'm always willing to preach. But I came to church with a desire to preach. Some, some of you know that I'm, I'm one of them old Baptists. But I, some of them don't know that because they say I got too much Pentecostal in me. But uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. Um, I may not get to do it today. And Sister Frida knows that I, and Paul knows, and Mel knows, and uh, Fran knows, and uh, Rosie knows, and uh, Joyce probably knows, and Judy probably maybe knows. And there's a few more of you that knows that I'm also one of them old hacking preach oh Bert back there Bert no and I come to church Bert I come to church and I said Lord help me to do a little hacking today would that run into you of you off if I see you leaving before I get done I know it did amen you either for me or against me praise the Lord praise God you've got to the chapter of three in in the book of John I better put my glasses on I also I also I came with the desire to be on the internet today somebody told me Heidi I guess told me that they love me and sister Frida told me I think that they love me on the internet all right you think I'm wild I bet there was a one or two out of all the singers today of all the people that sing today was it one in the crowd that came to church wanting to sing. Well, then what's wrong with me wanting to preach? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Somebody call it blowing your own horn, but I call it preaching the gospel. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. God called me to preach back in 1975 in the month of August, and I've been preaching ever since. I haven't changed the message. It's still Jesus and Him crucified. If I wanted to preach today, I'd love to preach on the blood because he said without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Amen. I'm a sinner, but I'm not no more. I'm a saint of God. Amen. Somebody said you're just, that Christians are just sinners saved by grace. I, I said, no, they were sinners, but they're not sinners no more. Remember that old song they used to say, I've been down to the river and I've been baptized. Glory be to the name, boys. Listen, honey, there's something happened in my life. It may never happen to you. Ha, boys, listen. Ha, I changed roads. Ha, well, I ain't going to happen, don't I? Ha, well, glory be to God. Ha, well, Paul, I tell you something. 
son, if it hadn't have been for me, you probably wouldn't be where you're at today. I'll listen to you. Honey, some of you here today would still be out in sin unless I'd obey the Lord and begin to preach the Word. Honey, because listen, you're begotten by the Word. And it takes a, a please God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that will believe, brother. But you got to first have the preacher. Amen. Praise the Lord. Honey, somebody said I won them by singing a song. You didn't know, do no such thing. You might have broke their heart up and softened it up a little bit. But it takes the Word of God preached by the anointing of God, brother. Honey, better listen. I'll argue all day with you better it's man or woman. But it's got to be a preach in the Spirit of the Lord. Aren't you glad you saved? Ain't you glad you're on that road? Melton said it's a little narrow road. Honey, listen. In the old Bible said the road, where they was a road, what was that one called? A highway of holiness. Nobody wants to be holy. Honey, everybody wants to hang on with one hand to the world and one hand to the Lord. It won't work, friend. Honey, you'll end up in hell. Some people said they'd been saved for so long, so many years, so many days, so many weeks or so on and the Lord spoke to them and, and they realized uh, they had to quit their sinning. Well I'm going to let you know something. I prayed about right here, not this altar but at an altar and when I got about right there uh, the Lord said listen you're not going to be talking with the same tongue you used to talk with. You're not going to be going to the same old hell holes and hanging out with that crowd no more. Honey Herbie friend and God is no no respect the person. <laughs> Honey, he's able. He's able to change your heart. He's able to change your mind. He's able to change you from head to toe. Didn't he? He said he'd come to the Lord. Ain't that good? Came to the right source, didn't he? To get the question answered. And he said to him, what did he say? There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Oh, listen. He was in the church, brother. Hear me now, honey. Listen. I'm afraid. I'm scared. I don't want to be. Listen. I don't judge nobody. But I'm afraid there's a lot of people in the church that I listen, a pastor nearby has a large church of some 300 people told me a few years ago. He said, I doubt that half of the people coming to my church are saved. Well, I don't think he ought to have got into that, but nevertheless, honey, it ain't all that say, Lord, Lord, I'm going to enter in. But he that does the will of the Father, hear me, praise the Lord. Honey, listen, I've been reading today this week over in Deuteronomy about the, the blessings and the curses. Honey, a lot of people preach the blessing, but they don't want to follow up with the curses. There's a cursed, but let me tell you something. I got news for you. I believe that, that was all for the children of Israel. Honey, hear me. I'm saved by grace through faith, not of works, least any man should boast. You quit all your sinning. Honey, you can quit getting drunk. You can quit your lying and stealing. Honey, you can quit all your bad habits. Honey, and still die and go to hell. That's sad to say, ain't it? Because God wants us to quit them. God wants us to get out of the world. God wants us to, to go to the house of the Lord and worship and praise Him. But most of all, he wants you to believe on His Son. He wants to accept His sacrifice of His blood that will cleanse you from all sin. Amen. He wants that. Listen, if you don't do that, you've denied God. You've done the bad thing. You've done. You know what you've done? You've blasphemed against the Holy Ghost. Amen. You blasphemed against the Holy Ghost. If you're trying to play both sides of the fence, you can't do it. There ain't no fence anyway. Paul, I'm not going to give you any time or not today, son. I'll tell you, uh, listen to me. He said they came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know thou art teacher. Come from God. No man can do these miracles I do as except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Woo! Praise the Lord. Born again. How our churches have, have used that and wore it out.
They wore it out. They wore it out. I'm born again. Amen. Except a man continue to the end, the same shall be saved. I'll tell you what. What was that old preacher Armstrong? Herbert W. Armstrong. You ain't no, you've got a couple of you old enough to hear him back in the 50s. His doctrine was, after the resurrection. Does anybody know about the resurrection? Have you studied any on the resurrection? Well... After the resurrection, I'm going to get a new body. Now, if you get one before that, you, you, you've done better than I can do because the Bible says that's when we'll get it. I'm going to get a new body likened unto the Lord. Then I'll be new in the spirit and in the body. Amen? I'll be perfect. Till then, I've got to, by the grace of God, I've got to keep my deeds honorable before God. Not before you, but before God. Because some of you got some light convictions i could probably make it but that ain't the what it is god's got some tough ones just read the sermon on the mount and you'll find out one of our famous billy graham evangelists said that no man can live to that sermon and without the grace of god they could it takes the blood it takes the grace of god david couldn't live it david committed murder adultery huh that's two big things he done i don't know what else and he was a man after god's own heart but you can't live Somebody said, I'm a Christian, I keep the Ten Commandments. Well, let's see. Let's see now. Uh, thou shalt not make any great... No, thou shalt have no gods before me. Are you perfect there? Thou shalt not make any graven images. You might make that one. But we don't have hardly too much of that, except some of these devil worshippers. I don't think we got any of them today, have we? We got none today. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain. Have you been cursing? Now one that I maybe I could, I don't know about. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Well, under the law, that was Saturday. You couldn't eat from Friday. I mean, you couldn't eat. You couldn't work, and you couldn't travel but six-tenths of a mile. Couldn't build a fire. That was on Friday night at 6 till Saturday night at 6. The Jewish day was started at 6 in the evening and concluded at 6 the next evening. That was one day and one night. Now we serve the Lord on Sunday because the apostles because the Lord raised from the dead on Sunday the first day of the week honor thy father and thy mother that'd kill a bunch right there they'd kill a whole slew of them. used to have a little a little nursing home once before that time was a, a, a hospital over at San Pierre. Some of you might have worked over there. It was full of old people. And you know where they came from, Bert? Chicago. And they brought them down there, left them, and they said when, when they die, let us know. Call us. That ain't much honor, is it? Okay. Thou shall not kill. You know there's a lot of ways you can kill besides shoot or knifing. You can kill me by your tongue. Did you know that there's people in this community that will not darken the door of this church because of lies that's been told on me? I just tell it like it is. I just tell it like it is. I talk to people, not every day, Jerry, but... I often know. And I'll tell him, I said, you know Jerry Cooley? Boy, I'll tell you what, he must, he's either got everybody fooled or he's an awful good man. I don't know one of the two. <laughs> because I haven't met one that run him down. Boy, he says I can find him. All right, where am I? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Does anybody know what committing adultery is? I think that's two, two people, two people in a relationship and they're not married. Is that good enough? Trying to say anything more with the kids. Okay. Thou shalt not do that. Thou shalt not steal. Well, I don't reckon. Thou shalt not covet. Oh, gosh. That might get some of us. My car's getting kind of worn out, and I, go, I drive down the highway, uh, the streets every day, and I say, Ooh, I wish I had one of them. I told the wife yesterday, I said, I think I'm not going to sell my car, but I'm going to buy me a truck, you know, because I like to have a truck. You men know what I'm saying? Some of you women know. I see these girls riding all over around town in, in pickup. You better watch them. They'll run over you. And thou shall not bear false witness. Surely you wouldn't belong to church and do that. Nevertheless, you do all that. Paul said the law from the prophet unto John. But what happened after John? You know who we're talking about? John the Baptist? The one that was a wild man on the uh, uh, Jordan River saying repent, repent, repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. And them Pharisees and Sadducees and them publicans and all them uh, ones of the 
authority in the church, they come rushing up there. I heard this, this man is baptizing people. What in the world? That's a madman. We know uh, that ain't what the doctrine of the of the church. He said to him, he said, bring forth fruits of repentance. Repent, 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 and be baptized. Somebody said, well, if you get them down to the altar, you better let them sit, or, uh, sit in the church for six weeks and then before you baptize and make sure they're going to make it. Bring forth fruits of repentance. How can you bring forth fruit? Only the Spirit can bring forth. Only the Spirit can bring forth fruit. My righteousness is filthy rags before God. Woo! Glory be to God! Woo! God bless the Lord today. Children, listen to me. Listen to me. Oh, Jesus, he said, uh, Verily, for I say, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And he could then be said, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Now, listen, now, that's kind of about as foolish as most sinners would say. This man's in church. He's the leader in the church. Amen. How in the world would you know that? Wasn't no way that. The Lord would talk like that. No, but he said, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, it cannot enter into the kingdom of God. God, there's an entrance way. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come unto me except my Father who sent him draw. There's a spirit way. There's a difference. And the Bible said in the resurrection, there's a spiritual body. Amen. And then there's a natural body. Amen. There's an I declare unto you today. There's a spiritual man in the church. And there's a natural man in the church. But the natural man, I listen, no flesh and blood shall inherit the kingdom of God. Honey, listen to me. If you're planning to go over and get with grandma and grandpa and putting your taters out on Good Friday, I forget about it. Draw nigh to God and He'll draw nigh to you. You can't get there like that. Amen. Some of them said now we got the internet and we got uh, uh, national television, worldly television, all that. Now that God can come and announce His coming. Hear me to this end. Hear me to this end to you. Hear me today. I, I can God speak to this one over here I, and speak to this one over here at the same time? Well, glory be to God. He can do it all how big is your God? About big enough to see one of them little phones you got in your hand? Come on to me, children. My God is awesome. Hey, Jeff Berg, I heard you just used it. Awesome. Hey, I don't know. Somebody look up that word, what awesome is. What day this week? Howdy, maybe you already know. Awesome. I'm not talking about the getting Webster's Dictionary down. I don't want you to get that. I want you to get God's Dictionary. God's Dictionary. There's a big difference, you know that? A lot of people follow the Bible by the Webster's Dictionary. They'll try to tell you what grace is. What God's grace is. Webster's Dictionary. I don't know where Webster went, but he's gone. He's gone. His word and his definition of words is good, but he's not going to go to heaven on that. He born of the flesh, his flesh, and that which is born of spirit. And marvel not that I said unto thee, you must. Born day. Present day. Present tense. Armstrong, I'm sorry. You know by now, it's not after the resurrection. It's now. Jesus said, today is the day of salvation. Today. Today. Today, today, that means in your lifetime. That means why you have your right mind. You know, God forbid that any of you ended up in the nursing home without your mind. But you got to realize there's a possibility of it. There is a possibility of it happened to each and every one. Okay? I personally like... Uh, uh, Frida, I don't believe it'll ever happen to me. But I've got enough sense to know that there's a lot of them out there that don't know up from down. And I tell them, sometimes they call me in to pray for people. They call me in to ask me to, to get them where they can get right with God. You know, and they wait till they, they, they put them in those hospitals. And they're critical when they come in. They go right into intensive care when they get there. And they, and they put that thing down their throat. God forbid I ever have that thing down my throat. Yeah. And they, and they finally end up putting them on their machines. Heidi could tell this story better than I could. But they don't know up from down. 
And then they called the preacher and wanted him to get, get them right with God. Let me tell you something, folks. If you're not right with God, you better get right before that happens to you. You better get right with God before that happens to you. And don't think it won't. And don't know that when it could happen. they got young people. And been in accidents and everything. Serious. My son-in-law just passed away. 43 years old. And he thought, fought that cancer for three over three years. With everything that was in him. And he said time and time again it would never get him. But it did. Listen, death. You don't have to get 76 years old, which I'll be in a couple of weeks, to get to die. No. Somebody said something about all this, somebody's young fellow that was, just got killed, 19 years old. Somebody said in another one, that, more further back, how the, oh, the one I preached the funeral that was drunk, head on collation. You ever, did you ever kill a bug? That could be me and you. I always tell them you don't have to, sometimes you don't, don't have to worry about self, you have to worry about that other fellow. That other fellow. My brother-in-law, friend's brother, was 39 years old. Worked all day. Worked all day hard. I'm trying to remember what kind of work he was doing. Railroad, working on the rail. Anybody work on the railroad? We ain't got a railroad worker. Your husband did, yeah. What's that old song? I've been working on the railroad all the live long day. Well, I worked on it about three months. <laughs> it was in the hottest summer I believe I ever saw. And a railroad, the, the creosote ties, they draw heat that you can't believe. And them rails, them steel rails. And if you work on the railroad, and I did in the summer, and we had a boss, bless his soul, he's probably gone but now, I'd say so. Somebody probably killed him. <laughs> he wouldn't let us go get water. You heard me. He, he wouldn't let... We had to go leave the railroad and go across some farmer's house or something. It's between Laporte and Westfield. And and he only two or three times a bill a day he'd let somebody take that five gallon can and go across and fill it up with water. And of course by that time we was all so dry and parched tongues and everything that we drunk it up like now. And it'd be two hours that you'd be don't take very long to do that. That's how quick. He was coming home, worked all day on the railroad, 39 years old. Never drank a drop in his life. There ain't many people can say that. He had a brother that drank enough for both of them, but he never drank none. This fellow sat in Oasis Tavern in San Pierre all day. He's out there working, trying to make a dollar for his family. And this guy sat in that tavern. And he got up, staggered out. They almost couldn't get to his car. They begged him not to get in the car. They knew he was back right. It used to be a lot more crooked air. He come around that curve, they estimated 90 miles an hour. Couldn't keep the car on the same, on his side of the road. Went to the other side, hit Clell Miller. Head on, both men dead. Well, they had to take Clell and make one... O'Donnell, remember O'Donnell who used to be in Judson? Made one whole side of his face. And unbelievable, he took a picture and done that. But he did, and they showed him. I don't know where I'm going here, but God's, God's in, in the range. So should I preach against drinking? Are you a dram drinker? Are you a sipping saint? Are you in denial? They want to they glorify sin. Oh, you can watch TV. They're having a big party. They're living it up. They're drinking and getting 
and messing with one another's wives and they're done all ungodliness and they're glorifying sin. Sinner, hear me today. Unless you turn to Jesus and repent, you're going to go to hell. But thanks be unto God, there's hope for you no matter how far you've went the wrong way. Thanks be unto God. If it wasn't, I wouldn't be able to say I'm saved today because I've done the same thing. I've been out all night and didn't know when I got home. I wrecked my car one time, twice in one night, and didn't know I wrecked it, thought I dreamed it. But I looked at the car the next morning, I know it wasn't a dream. Hear me, folks, today. Teach your children. Teach them against drinking. Teach them against lying and stealing. It'll take you down to hell.